and we're back. Yo, 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 yo. What's good, baby? Hey, Mr. Mr. How you doing? All is well. Chilling, trying to, trying to chill at least, you know, because it's hot. Woo! It is hot. Yes, it is, it is swamp butt. As <laughs> they didn't say butt, they said the other word. It's yes. Swamp. You just yeah. sweat, you don't want to sweat, you're like, ah. It's like, it's like three, three showers a day type weather. Yeah, right, completely. You know, it's like, I want to take a nap because I might fall asleep and wake up in a pool of sweat type weather. It's like, it's so hot that if you got plastic on your couch, you shouldn't sit on it tight one. No, no. <laughs> you might never get up. You be stuck there on the table. There's nothing worse. Gosh, remember those moments? For me, the plastic cover, we had them everywhere. Mm -hmm. The heat was one thing, and then those little cracks. Oh. And, oh, my God. That was just the devil. My <laughs> you trying to put a little duct tape on it, whatnot, yeah. trying to make sure it's... And then the corner, I let it go. Yeah, right. The corner edges get sharp. Oh my goodness! Don't accidentally brush up against that bad boy. You know what oh. I mean? Just, just let it go. Let it go. I had an aunt that had her pillows wrapped in plastic too. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it looked good because it was like, <laughs> you think about it, it was like, wow. I remember the, I, remember, I actually remember the first time sitting on a couch that wasn't covered in plastic and was like, ooh. <laughs> oh, this this is how the other side feels. <laughs> right. nice. So nice to look at, but I just want to feel it. It's <laughs> good on my body. <laughs> oh goodness, that is too funny. Too yeah. funny. So how's the how's the week been, man? Exhausting. I can't lie. Just extremely exhausting. So much work, so much um struggles and journeys and you know, we, but if, you know, if we want this moment to be a movement, we got to work. Mm -hmm. They are working me. <sighs> I can only imagine, good brother. I can only imagine you out here in these digital streets. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Waiting, waiting on paper checks. Mm. Mm. Right? There's got to be a better way. There must be a better way. I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to offend my clientele. <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, the, the real honesty, the male, the male here in New York City is just jacked up. I'm, I'm sure. Here it comes once in a while. You don't come for a few, a bunch of days, and all of a sudden you're back. Your box is stuffed with stuff. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if the male's been crazy over here, but the trash has been ridiculous. Oh, really? Oh, no. oh my goodness. The trash still outside right now. The day, pick up day Friday. Ooh, and it's hot. It's oh, hot. No. It's hot. Listen, if, if if there's maggots and stuff coming out of that, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. So the worst. Huh? That is the worst. Huh? But if you know, if you drive through certain neighborhoods, the trash is gone. You know that, right? Oh, I'm sure. I'm you sure. I'm so sure. I'm sorry, my brother. That's that's uh, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. <laughs> no good. No good. That's I'm, that's that is that is one of those like old school um, systemic racism mm -hmm. by economic disadvantage situation strategies. Old school. Because mm -hmm. they'd be like, "Why your neighborhood is so dirty and smell like this?" Because y'all don't pick up the trash. When I first moved to New York, I lived in Harlem, and I remember having a talk with one of my friends. They were living. We all yeah, we all came after college doing our thing. I was up at 123rd to enroll in Amsterdam. And one day I was like, God, it's so annoying to take the trash out on Wednesdays, because I'm not used to that. And my friend was like, don't you mean one, Monday, Wednesday, Friday? <laughs> I said, excuse me? She said, yeah, we get our trash to up three times a week on the Upper East Side. Mm. And she was up in the 70s, not that far from me. I'm on 123rd. And I was like, really? Your trash is picked up three times. Which makes sense for a big old building. That building wasn't big. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's as old. That's just, that's design, baby. That is systemic. That is an approach. That is a strategy. So anytime you find yourself being like, it's so dirty around here, why don't they pick up the trash? Mm -hmm. Because the trash is accumulating. Because people are being told they're not worth getting the equal support that they're guaranteed by paying that tax dollar. Exactly. Exactly. Same thing when it comes to snow and snow oh. removal. I've seen this several times. You go to certain spaces, it is plowed. It's like, did it snow? I could have sworn we had a pod. 
and then you step outside your front door, please believe it, snow's still there. Still you know what you do? What, what I say you got to do, and I do a little what I can, you got to Karen the heck out of them and call them, like, hi. <laughs> I called an hour ago, but they haven't picked up my trash. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's been, it's been an hour, and I haven't heard anything back. Yeah, mm -hmm. sick of you. You're right. That's not guaranteed, but if you get, mm -hmm. if you get your whole block doing that, Cause that's some flyers that I call this number every 20 minutes to make comments. Yep. Yep. Demands. Make demands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it is, we're kind of like laughing and joking at it, but it's really infuriating. Oh, yeah. It is infuriating. And it's especially during this, especially during this time period, because there's so many things that are just compounding. And it's just, sometimes I wake up, I'm like, really? This is, we, again, this is what we're doing today? Yeah. Yeah, not cool. Mm -mm. Not cool at all. But you know what is cool? What's that? Our beautiful t-shirts. Oh, exactly. Man. And whatever we sipping on today. Exactly. I'm ready for it. <laughs> what you rocking, brother? Uh, I no, I'm I'm pretty proud of what I'm got. Look, this came in the mail. It's oh. kind of, kind of big because I I said you know my friend after Rona I need an X a two XL. <laughs> I really need the two XL. Like, <laughs> I was encouraging. I, was, I, put, I got the road aside. But what it is, it's beautiful. 846 in Market Street in Montgomery, Alabama, there's a point where uh, Montgomery has some of the highest numbers of slaves being brought into the country. It was a market. Mm. So they were brought into the, and it's a, it's a port town. It brought up the Alabama River, um, marched up to um, up Commerce Street, stored in actually the building that is now the EJI building. Mm. Uh, you can just initiative in Montgomery, Alabama. And then right down the block to the to the a few blocks away, there's a center with this beautiful fountain that was the official trading the slave block. Mm -hmm. And so my friend Michelle, she has a thing called More Than Just Tours, which is all kinds of history. And what they did is they painted Black Lives Matter around the um circle, mm -hmm. which is so powerful. So pictures and made t-shirts and just like reclaim that space. Mm -hmm. uh, reclaimed it. And, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, they may not say it, but I'm saying they're energy and spirit because your boy, Jeff Sessions, had an mm -hmm. office. Like, if this is a sort of square, his office is like right here. Yeah, he ain't win. He didn't win that, that campaign. He's out. Goodbye. Bye-bye. So long, Jeff Sessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so was, Michelle, send me a shirt. Send me a, the 2XL. It's a little too big, which I'm proud of. But mm -hmm. um, I, love, I love this shirt. Look at that. Okay. That's dope. Oh. Four six of Market Street, Mount Garmy, Alabama. We, when we when the when the fevers go away, we all must go there. Mm. Mm. Go we'll see Michelle. She'll hook you up. Show you around. It's my girl. I'm all about it. All about it. That's what's up. What you got? Another ensemble from the movement, Philadelphia. Nice. So you know, self-explanatory, pretty much. That's nice, good. nice black and gold colors. You know, just. Kicking it, you know. I think, you know, I'm I'm feeding them and they're feeding me. The movie Philadelphia, you know, mm -hmm. I think they said they're gonna have some loyal customers um coming out for like certain days or whatever. So, you know, see if I can get it done. But that's why I, I know it's black on. I, I see the people who are exchanging the buddy and actually printing the shirts and own the space. Well, not own the space, lease the space. That's another piece that we need to talk about at some point. But yeah, for sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. How about the um, other happiness? What's your libation? You know what, brother? It's, and, I, and, and I appreciate the fact that you actually said libation today because it's, it's number of different reasons. So our good brother that you, you and I both know, um, he hit us up on Instagram because on our Instagram, we was like, what, what you sipping on? Anything that you like to sip on? You know? Yes, yes, Anything go on. you like to sip on? And our, our good brother, the big homie Mark, he said he loves himself some. Gentleman Jack. Oh, my. oh, okay now. So I had to go get some Gentleman Jack. So it was one as a shout out to the good brother, big homie Mark, but also I had to pick up two because I thought it would be fitting to have two of these, right? For the two gentlemen who we lost oh. this past Friday. So mm. I just wanted to have that for them in the mm. sense of, you know, making sure that one represent for for the homie Mark, but also for the gentleman that we lost. 
So that's what I'm sipping on today. Wow, you stay deep. <laughs> you stay deep. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm glad Harlem Twitch to be extra. <laughs> that's beautiful. Beautiful. Mr. John Lewis and Mr. C.T. Vivian. Yes, sir. Incredible. And, and earlier this week, Nelson Mandela's daughter. Yes. 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 You know, these major, major um, pillars in our, in our global society. Mm -hmm. Right before Nelson Mandela's birthday. It's just like, it's, it's, it's been a week. It has. It has. It has. It's been a week. It's been a week. Um, ooh, let's, let's, let's. How about you, good brother? What you got? I'm more like, let's drink. <laughs> <laughs> got the fingers. Right? I was trying to get something that would cool me down. I, this just gave me a feeling that would cool me down, even though it's Bernie Wells, nice, whatever. I figured it would cool me down. Mm -hmm. um, and a little foreshadow, I think we both are waiting on some, some booty in the mail. Yes, we, yes, we are. Well, y'all stay tuned and come back, because I think we both put a beautiful order in for a new, beautiful relationship that we're building. But yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. I have my other little bottle on standby, just in case. <laughs> man, that's so great, Mr. They, they were gentlemen. Oh, man. You got me with that one. You got me. You got me. <laughs> Listen, there was people who I've come across, some of my mentors, you know, I've, I've always been called quiet, reserved, unflappable, stoic. Some folks have said still, um, still waters run deep, all these things, you know. So there's times when there's always something going there below the surface. You know, but there's other times when I get a little, you know. <laughs> it's been it's been powerful to see the multiple sides of Mikhail. You know, likewise, brother. It's been good to see you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Bring a lot to the table, and it's uh, it, it is uh, it's powerful. I appreciate that, and I, I think I think you and I both know that code switching is real. You and I both know that. In order for us to survive, there are times when we can't fully show our full selves in every single context and space that we're in. Um, but boy, oh boy, whenever we're together, whenever we get a chance to like just let our hair down, you know, <laughs> get a little, get a little froggy, start to leap, we good. Froggy, start to leap. I love that. <laughs> yes, that's good. That's good. We're here, here. So good relationships. Yes. Cheers. And uh. I guess, I guess another one maybe. I guess, I guess for for all the all the severity of the moment, everybody that we've lost, and the folks that are still doing the good work, and to you, sir, because you're doing all the good work and you still look fresh doing it, sir. You still look fresh doing it. Had to get that in real quick. Right on. Thank you, bro. Of course. Oh. Mm -hmm. I almost like we're gonna put some ice up in it because it's so darn hot. I hear that. No, I gotta, I gotta stay neat. Mm. Gotta stay neat. <laughs> yes, stay neat. Stay neat. Well, this is, ooh, um, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is real that. smooth. Have a have a hat, gentlemen, Jack, in a little while. This is it's it's a nice it's a nice little something something. Oh yeah, it's it's ooh. Where'd you go get those? So there is so and here's the other piece we want to talk about systemic racism and things of that nature. So we all know that in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, it's the state store, which means all the stores have the same prices, et cetera. However, there are some stores that are the premium collection who have premium, premium selection where, you know, there's more bottles, different variety, higher end stuff in certain spaces. And they actually have more of a selection when it comes to the little bottles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went and got this from Chestnut Hill. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 That whole that little little bottle universe is always something. Mm -hmm. Because you know they got the they got at the regular ones who are you know in the neighborhood I'm in. You know they got right. your little bottles of the regular. They might have a little bottle of the the henny. They might have some other bottles like the expensive bottles of certain things. But no one's buying that. They'll probably buy the bigger bottle if they're going to buy it anyway. Right. Um, right. So that's where I found these little ones. Mm -hmm. You had to, you had to go up, up the, uh, you get, go run. You take your papers. You had to mm -hmm. run a little exercise to get you, get your. I'm crossing the line, honey. I'll be back. 
<laughs> Cross the line. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, um, Philadelphia really has some like historically exclusive, really exclusive like neighborhoods that have changed. That's mm. my question mark. They haven't really changed, and I, I get that, and I think that. Yeah, but y'all, that trash is picked up in Chestnut Hill. Mm. You know, and that comes down to some of the people that run the department live up there. You know, like straight up. Mm. Uh -huh. That's real talk. That's real. So I guess that, that leads me to the question, good brother. Please. I mean, because you, you, you have been doing this work for 20 plus years, right? And you have been in the game in a number of different ways, whether it's producing films, whether it's facilitating conversations, whether it's running an online dialogue, et cetera, working in schools, different spaces, giving keynotes. One, I know you're busy now, which means more coin is coming in. However, however, how are you maintaining I want to phrase this question responsibly. How are you maintaining hope and endurance and stamina without becoming jaded or angry or even bitter about mm -hmm. how things have been, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how things are, mm -hmm. and everything that's happened in between to get to this moment, thinking about what could be on the horizon or what might not be on the horizon, depending on what happens now? So uh, that's a, a large question, but if you, if you get my drift, brother, how do, how do you deal and cope with all that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's a good, it's a, it's a good and deep question because it's heavy. Mm. And it's strange when you, when you hear people like, wow, this is really real. This is, this is of substance. And you're like, I told you that 20 years ago. Mm. I told you read that book 10 years ago. I told you that book last year, last week, last month. And now you're like, this book is amazing. Can you believe it? Um, so <clears throat> it gets frustrating and also wonderful at the same time. And I think, you know, I, I thought of one funny is I went to the barber shop. Hey now. Get my, bring my fat head back. <laughs> um, and uh, I went yesterday, shout out to my barber for cleaning me up. You know, and it's, it's just joyful. You can see it. everybody in there is like, we're back together in the bar. You know, they're talking about going to play all the things they're doing and, you know, just like laughing and talking. And you can just feel the, the love inside the barbershop. And it's just good to go there and be there, you know. Um, my little fancy barbershop. Mm. Uh, I walked in and I was sweating. And I was like, yo, you got paper towels? And I'm like, no. And somebody's in the bathroom. And I was like, I got it. I got it. Like, no, I just got a black towel. We got this whole little section of black towels folded up. Ready for you, right temperature. You just pat your head down. I was like, oh, okay, I feel cared for in this uh -huh. place. You know? uh -huh. um, they cover the seats in plastic. They know those like those plastic rolls. I got one over there. I don't get it. Those plastic rolls used for packing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Every single person cover the whole chair with it, and then it's, it's one whatever these things are called per person. They, they finish uh -huh. done. Wow. Go okay. The room. Like it's like tight. You can't come in if you don't feel well. If you're early, you gotta wait outside. Sorry. Your, what time is your appointment? Go outside. There's some chairs lined up. It's, it's tight. Like I was like, y'all are trying to stay open. That's you know? what's up. They made they made me take my mask off and they say, here, use this mask because your mask will get hair on it. I was like, my barber gonna get mad because I'm about to hug him. I'm like, I'm gonna go. <laughs> so I've been praying myself and listen. So um, that's, that's one way that is really being like, you know, when I went and got cleaned up, cause the other day I was like, yeah, I, oh, I forgot that I can go do this. Mm, you know? This has been five months. So I went 10 days after the first day. I'm like, oh, let me go get cleaned up. And that was, that was a real moment. I'm like, I feel better. Mm, mm. And with this heat today, I'm glad I got it. Yeah. 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 Um, and then for me, and this has always been the case, like I've always been a people person and pulled energy and help and information from people. And if it, even, it, just, it could even mean just being around them mm. or um, <clears throat> connecting with them. And so in one of my sessions, I'm doing this class. I was, I was a guest speaker at a class at UPenn. It's a dope class that is a class 
um, a summer class for some of the top forming students around the world. You know, this when it, it was one kid who was on from Beijing, it was three in the morning. Mm. He was like, oh, Sylvia, I'm so glad you're here. And I was like, that's what's up, you know? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I was like, you, he, he's, I'm fine, I'm here, I'm glad I'm here. It's a class, I love it. You know, and they meet every day and they have a speaker in the morning, speaker in the afternoon, and do, do all kinds of research. And they're looking at, um, you know, like everybody, they switch their curriculum and focus more on issues related to equity, justice, and the kids get projects at the end. It's, it's really phenomenal. So I was asked to speak about my films and how filmmaking and education and um, fight, fighting for equity and justice and against racism, how, how, how my films and my anti-racist work meet and combine. So I gave this whole talk. They watched my film at Prep School Negro beforehand and I looked at my, civil, my um, Nature Magazine piece and civil rights piece. And then they all came with like questions. I did a presentation and it was good. But the, the reason I'm saying this is one young woman, um, her name was, I think her name was like, I'm not gonna say her name, that's a young person. She had the same last name as me. And I was like, I was like, what's up cousin? And she's Asian, so she's like, ah, ah, ah. and I was like, that's right, you're Lee, you're my cousin. That's and so, yeah, right? And um, she said, I have a question, you know, we're talking about monuments and you work in the film business. And I wanna ask this question. There's one monument in Los Angeles, California, the Hollywood sign, that is a representation of the exclusion of people around race, misuse and treatment of women, should that come down? I know, and I was like, oh! <laughs> wow. But I was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I didn't think about that, you know? Because mm-hmm. I was like, yes for these kids thinking like that. Yes for these kids. They're like, I don't care how big it is. That thing represents the mistreatment of women, exclusion of women, Racism, racism, racism. The creation of some of the systems that we have in place. You know, when you watch a TV show and it's majority white people in some place, or all white people, that was a choice. Mm-hmm. And marketing people, publicity people, executives of studios think we gotta have Billy Bob at the top of this and lead, you know, and have another car- have us carrying a suitcase. Even some of our progressive shows. There's a show on Netflix right now, we'll talk about. It's directed by one of my favorite black directors. And it's a white woman in the lead. And the black girl, I haven't gotten to the black girl comes in. I'm just like, that's a choice. Mm. You know, the white male is put forward so prominent and perfect and good and challenging and interesting. And then we come in and like yell and scream and mm. pimps, rapists, gang people, all the things that come into place. Um, that is a choice. And she was getting it. She's like, that sign is put there to celebrate that movement. And that stopped me in my tracks. Mm, mm, I, was like, mm. I, was like, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know. I've been to the sign and it feels good when you're there, but she's so right. Mm. She was like, it, it, it represents such horrible things. And I was stumped. So when a young mind can go there, and even though I'm still working, that, that's what energizes me. Like moments like that, when I'm like, wow, I didn't think about that. You gave me something else to think about and explore and research and ponder. And I love it. I love it. I love it, you know? Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's two. That's two. And I have a third. Mm-hmm. I'll say, um, you know, sometimes I just need to go out and just, like, I, the, I, I'm with the solitude, you know? I am truly the most extroverted introvert in the world. Can't lie, I'm honest. And so yesterday, you know, have you heard about the comet Neo Wise? That's uh, comet. No. It's a comet called Neo Wise. And it's, it's like, a, they think it's the size of the comet that hit the earth and destroyed the dinosaurs and shifted our planet. Um, no one was there, so we can't really speak to it, but we have science and blah, blah, blah. But this is a comet that was coming and a um, satellite saw it, you know, this thing was five kilometers. It's huge, mm. you know, like the size of a country. And it, it is passing us. And it's, it's northwest of um, the northern hemisphere. So, I, and you, like, you go to the Little Dipper and look at the edge, you can possibly see it. I couldn't see it so good last night because this New York City is so much air pollution. But, you know, I went and got on a bike and rode over and just sat by the water, looking at the sky, just trying to get it, and just 
cut everything off and just spent like 45 minutes staring at stars as much as I could see um, over the Hudson River looking for the comet. Mm -hmm. you know? There was a family there with their two kids. And I was like, do y'all see it? Like, you think so, but that's sad. And we chatted for a second. Socially distanced, you know. Mm -hmm. Nice breeze coming in because it was so hot. And then I walked back home and I came through Washington Square Park. And man, it was jumping. Oh, yeah? <laughs> jumping. There was like a band set up in one place. There was a social distance, like DJ party, <laughs> where the homeboy had his drums and was going like, like drumsticks beat to the beat and it was like hip hop and house and folks were cutting up and it was it was like it was so New York that you had like the old people that had their lawn chairs sitting on the edges like this. Mm -hmm. Old teenagers off beat with their skateboards under their arms going. <laughs> it was so real. And it was it was hot and it was the night and people were I mean I didn't get in the crowd because I was like I was like I don't want to be on like sweating bodies. So I stood around the edges and watched and kind of nod my head. Mm -hmm. And then I walked back home and that was, you know, moments like that. I lived for just going out, you know, and having an adventure and experience. So, yeah, those are some of the ways, some of the ways I do it. Because I, I just try to do what I like. You know, I like thinking, I like going to the barbershop, and I like um, exploring and, and trying, trying new places. Mm. I appreciate that. That's a, that's a, yeah. that's a whole lot, a whole yeah, lot. And it's important because you do a whole lot. And you know how they always talk about certain things are, are a thankless job, or mm -hmm. you might not see the fruits of your labor until later on in a person's life or later on in your life. Um, when people start to come around and understand exactly what you were talking to them about or what yeah. you were trying to help them see a little more clear. Um, so yeah, yeah, I appreciate all those things that you lifted up because it's important, self-care is important. And, it's just difficult to try to find that self-care in the midst of being super busy and doing all the things that you're doing that require uh, a sense of urgency and immediacy now, um, even though you've been trying to say it was urgent and immediate before. So, you know, me, I'm a type of dude who's like, eh, you know, get on my face with that. You know what I mean? And it's like, sometimes I, I need to stop myself from thinking about those things. Um, mm -hmm. And also just trying to, <sighs> just trying to also think about the importance of the work. Mm -hmm. Yet, also, there's a lot of questions I've been asking myself now, wrestling with things now, about how I want to show up, if I even want to show up in certain spaces and in certain ways, right? Should I even show up in certain spaces in certain ways? So when you think about all this stuff, all those things together, um, there's, a, there's a lot of questions that are just percolating in my mind as the world and its events unfold. Mm -hmm. um, and really think about in order to get from that moment and turn it into a movement, what actually has to move? You know, and thinking about priorities, what priorities actually have to move? Um, I saw something online and it was like a shirt that was like, it said, minding my black owned business, right? And stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, I love it. But it got me to thinking about minding my business. It got me to think about, you know, investing in myself, investing in my people, investing in institutions that, not only look like me and reflect who I am and where I come from, but also pour back into people who look like me and the places that I've come from. Um, so thinking about what that means in the grand scheme of everything, in particular to being in the spaces that I'm in and what spaces I might not be in, but could be in, in one form or fashion. So there's a lot of things that are swirling right now, particularly when I don't have the chance to really have that joy of being in front of students and seeing that light bulb go off, because doing that would be volunteer work for them and me. It's hard work, it's hard work, but it would be something in addition. And I, I am of the belief that they need a summer in some way, shape or form. It's, it's not the way that I'm sure they imagine a summer, although I'm sure a lot of them are living their best life. They out mm -hmm. there slapping fives, they doing parties, whatever. You know, but just thinking about when is it okay to unplug from certain spaces? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even if we're the ones who should be in those spaces to make sure that the stuff that take place there mm -hmm. happens in a responsible, respectful, and appropriate way to move this work forward. So there's just a lot of stuff that I've been thinking about. The wheel's just spinning, spinning, spinning. But I've been just doing work, 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 just trying to pour into me, pour into this, pour into us, um, in terms of like, for the culture again, 
um, but think about what does that mean in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, that's, that's good. That, I, I, it's funny. I was thinking just now, I often, after you talk, I go, that's good, you know, because often it's good. Um, just a little self-reflection moment there. But I, I think that I hear you in terms of the unplugging. And, you know, as I, you know, I gave poor keynotes this week. I got mm. lined up for next week. And people are like, so you're available this date in August, da, da, da. and I'm loving it. But I'm also like, um, I may need to find some time to take a serious break because uh -huh. the school year is about to start up and that's not stopping. And that's a whole nother story. Um, but mm. I got I to gotta carve in that space and be like, no more. All I'm going to watching movies and taking long walks. Because uh -huh. uh, I uh, can't go nowhere, you know, but um, I, have to, I have to carve into that space just personal quiet time. That's not, you know, I haven't, I haven't like read a book. Well, I did, uh, I did in the spring, but for the, but that's not that long ago, considering I'm, I'm always reading a book. Like I don't feel comfortable reading a book that's just like a book, you know, like, oh, you look at this. No, I'm like, okay, that's, how is this relevant? How does help, how does inform what I do? You know, um, and I need to take a little, take a little bit of, a little bit of a break. I want to go. I want to go to a beach, man. Oh yeah. I want to go sit on the beach and just like chill and jump yeah. in the water, socially distance and like chill. Hmm. You really use that? I bet. I bet, <laughs> brother. I really bet. Listen, you know, one of the things that I do miss, although making brown juice cocktails at home, is cool. Uh -huh. I do miss going out to like a happy hour. Yeah. With people. And it's almost like you're Norm from Chairs and everybody knows your name, right? Yeah. You show up, and all of a sudden, you know, you get your cocktail, you're kicking it, you're just catching up with people. I yeah. do like that, particularly because that's, that's what Amanda and I always do over the summer, usually. You know, when she has some time off from studying, et cetera, especially when I have time off from work, um, let's go hit it. Whether it's during happy hour during the week or whether it's just a Saturday and Sunday, we just want to go do something quickly. I do miss that. I miss that interaction, trying new drinks, um, you know, new beer that might come out. What's on tap? What's on track? Like, what's local? Um, and just trying to have those moments. Then you have a lot of music, live music stuff happening at night. You know, they uh -huh. open, all the shops start to open up their windows and things of that nature. I do miss that vibe and that scene. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm more so introverted in the sense of, like, you know, I'm good. I don't really need to be around people. Not too many, at least. Um, so I have my, like, little spots that I go, mm -hmm. you know, which, which feel like home or feel a little more comfortable, especially when they have air conditioning, you know? Mm -hmm. Other than that... <laughs> You know, I'm cool, but I do miss those pieces. I do miss those pieces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our world has has a shifted. I heard a, a medical professional say this, and it got me a little annoyed, like a little like, ooh. Because <laughs> he was like, yeah, we're all, he's like, I just wanted, want us to be aware of this and keep this in mind. We keep talking about the vaccine and when the vaccine arrives and what, how life will be different when it does. And I want to just, Put some reality in our minds that we should prepare for it. There not being a vaccine. Mm. We've been trying to get the vaccine for the common cold forever, and that's never come about. And I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is a complex disease that we're still learning about. <clears throat> mm -hmm. We talked like, oh, the vaccine will happen. You know, yes, we did smallpox, but we don't have one for HIV and AIDS yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not guaranteed that we will get a vaccine for this. That really, it's a little disturbing to bring up now, but I'm just thinking about it in terms of what it means with um, trying to get back to what we used to enjoy in terms mm -hmm. of culture. Because man, to go to a concert and check out music, you know, mm -hmm. that's a thing. I mean, yeah. I always want to I don't want to be down on the floor standing up. I'm a little <laughs> over that age. I need to know somebody to get me in the box or like, you know, get in the balcony. Get one of those tables. These, these people are like, why don't you on that table? I, want, I need to be up there. I need to be able to go back stairs and use the bathroom that everybody ain't using. You know. <laughs> I, I pay my dues. That's real. That's real. But still, you know, just miss, you know, miss all that. Mm -hmm. Miss all that. And I, I, I wonder... 
what it will look like in the future. If so, we hear it. so that brings up another question, good brother, because, you know, I, I have my own thoughts and my own opinions. But we're now in July, so we're in the second half of 2020, right? This week has been crazy. This year has been crazy. In your opinion, from your experience, all the things you've been experiencing throughout this quarantine, et cetera, what is 2020 trying to tell us? <laughs> I need to know. What do you think 2020 is trying to tell us? I think one mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. I, I think one thing is trying to tell us that we need to go to our room and think about ourselves. And what we've done. <laughs> go to your room and think about what you've done. Don't go out, <laughs> out don't play with people. Go to your room and think about what you've done. If you need to go, you got to cover your face up. And don't touch nobody. Um, I, 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 because all that's happening, I think we are, we've messed up the world. And we, and it's, it's in the shape that it's in because of what we've done. You know, this whole, I think about what's happening now in Portland, Oregon, and probably gonna happen someplace soon, sanctioned and ordered by your president, you know? Mofos pulling up in like four four case with tinted windows or minivans and grabbing people and not saying anything, no Miranda rights, searching them, taking photos, and then letting them go maybe in a couple hours. Like that is real. That's scary. Mm -hmm. you know? And people are like, yo, that's uh, what are we gonna do? This is pretty bad. I'm like, I this is being mandated from the man with the most power holding the highest position in the country. You know, I get so mad that he gets to hold that job. Oh. Cause you know, he's like, yep, I deserve this. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so, I think, I think 2020 is it's also saying like, Oh y'all, y'all, you want, you want to act like this? You want to do this? Okay. Let me show you what happens. 2020 is the, is that grandma watching us, put our hand on that hot stove after she told us every day for the past month, don't put your hand on that stove. Don't put your hand on the stove. And we like, hey, they ain't really going to burn, is it? You know? Mm -hmm. And 2020 is the grandma sent back like, go ahead. Then you burn your hand and you're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> rubbing it on like I told you. Pat! I told you, you know? Mm -hmm. And she's rubbing our, our wounds and also hitting us at the same time saying, why don't you listen? Why don't you listen? Yeah, I, I don't this 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 tells us a whole lot. I hope we hear it. What do you think? What do you think 2020 is trying to tell us? I love your analogies, by the way. It reminded me of a few too. Um, I would say it reminds me of, you know, if you ever argue with your sibling, and your mama or your papa or whomever, it's like either y'all fix it or I'll fix it. <laughs> I feel like God's like, listen, I'm going to give y'all some time to work this ish out. But if y'all don't, I'm going to fix it. So yeah. the way I see it, it's like 2020 is telling us we need to get our act together. 2020 is telling us that if we don't get our act together, because I feel like this is truly a moment of reckoning, particularly for our country um, and in many ways the world. Um, but if we don't get our act together, a lot of things are going to be difficult. The folks thought staying at home for a few months quarantine and having a social distance and wear a mask and all this ish is difficult. If we don't get our stuff together, if we don't get our stuff together, it's, it's going to be banoodles. That's bananas mixed with noodles. Banoodles. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be wild crazy. Banoodles is no good. Not at all. No one wants banoodles. We don't want that. So I think it's really one of those moments where, like, we need to be like, ah, ah, wake up, snap out of it, get it together. Because if we don't, ain't, gonna, ain't no vaccine for what we're going to have to deal with. Ain't no vaccine for that. So it's, we really need to, I'm thinking about all aspects, all facets of the life. You know, you think about education, you think about criminal justice system or injustice system. 
You think about in terms of like food insecurity, you think about global warming, you think about all these things. Mm -hmm. We got to get some ish together. Yeah, we really, we really, really, really do. Because it is, it is going down the tubes. And people just, people just get worse and worse and worse. Some of the stuff you hear about, you know, this morning I turned on the Twitter and the word Negro was trending. What? And I was like, oh, is it about my film? I, I got to look at like half a second. Like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. man, Roger Stone, your president's boy, who's been pardoned, uh -uh. was on a radio show. Did you hear about this? He was on a radio show. <laughs> Should I not say his name? He was on a radio show. And if you're being interviewed by a black man and was going on and on and pulled back and was like, I don't want to, I ain't got time to be answering questions from this Negro. Then it was, it was, it's recorded. The reporter, the reporter was like, oh, it's Mr. Sohn, excuse me? What did you say? And it got real dead silence quiet. I was like, you heard what he said. You heard what he said. He said, I ain't got time to answer questions from this Negro. I don't want to be in something like that. I don't want to be answering questions from this Negro. Like he said it. The president's boy who was just pardoned. Uh -huh. After lying to Congress and doing all kinds of stuff. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's it. So it's all a wreck. It's, a, it's incredible. Incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's what we're up against. Hmm. And people have power and dollars. And I bet you all that trash is picked up on time. <laughs> mm. They don't deserve that. Mm -mm -mm. Gosh. My goodness. Well, in other news, I don't know if you were able to get your hands on this and have you if you if you heard it yet. But uh, you know. Last time we spent some time together talking about what an entanglement is. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you heard about Word on the Street or if you heard the latest drop. Oh, Lord. I did not. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh. Feed me, feed me, yo. So, there's a new song out <laughs> by August Alcina featuring Ricky Rose Ross called Entanglements. Really? And as the young kids say these days, <clears throat> no cap, I ain't even gonna hold you. That ish is dope. Really? Yo, the song is fire. It goes hard, there's a bop to it. And if you listen to the lyrics, it ain't right. <laughs> it ain't right, it ain't right. But it's his truth though. Now he's speaking from the odd perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Sit from the eye perspective. Now, it's his turn. It's his turn now. So my, my, listen, when we get off this joint. Yes, first thing. Entanglements. My goodness. I'm like, ooh, wait, oh, oh. Wow. I mad, man. Make your money, young man. Make listen, you got to. Listen, they made theirs and, and that was the highest, the highest uh, rated uh, show that they had on the Red Table Talk out of all the episodes. And there was a lot of people who came through there who deserved to be seen. So, says a lot. Wow. Yeah. That's just how that just that just goes to show how crazy this week has been. Yeah. 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 I mean, tell me this: Had you did you know much about August before all this? I did only because of a, a few like songs that came out because people started trying to compare um, compare him to like Chris Brown. Oh, he's new entering his R and B scene. Blah blah. I mean, he's all right to me. Because you know, I I, I bang with other folks, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So if I had to if I had to be in that lane, you know, I got Chris Brown, but Trey Songs was like, people call me a Trey Songs groupie, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's how it'd be. Mm -hmm. However, I knew about August, but I didn't really follow him that much. But now when you start to get all the backstory and all the this is like Greenleaf, brother. I'm right, exactly. It's so crazy. It really is. This it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. This whole thing is a soap opera, meets a drama. It's just so much. Is this, but is, is this the new, because I think people, beefs are just done, sort of. Beefs are not what they used to be. Beefs used to be like, yo, Biggie and Tupac, you know. I think we had, I think, I think the world had a moment when like the whole Nicki Minaj and everybody else 
Mm -hmm. Is this really worth anything? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it wasn't. It wasn't because they're women. It was just because it was like this is ridiculous. <laughs> I think that's my opinion. But do you think that since we're in this world where so much information is at people's fingertips, you know that beefing has to have a new level? of interaction and, com and com 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 complication, that it has to be like some, almost on an entanglement level? You know what I mean? That's a great question. And, 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 and to quote uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, um, because of social media, we're all entangled with their drama. So now, whenever there's a rap beef or whatever, not only are we able to search about it, get multiple accounts, we're also able to get involved. So. Right. You're making a song about it, and you're not even involved. You're making a meme about it. You never even met these people. You're making Twitter um, handles or tweets about it and all this other stuff. So I think because we can engage in the beef as if we were actually involved in it, that's what's, that's what's changed the game. Because your beef is not just your beef alone, where people are taking sides. People are not only taking sides, they in it, and they're okay. adding fuel to the fire. Like, you can't sign on your own account, and then now you're hearing a song, not only from one dude, but from another person. It's crazy. We might even get to the spot where we see some of the footage. Like, it's like that. It's that world now. You're right. Whoa, it's that world. I don't want right. to see that. Me either. I wouldn't be surprised, but that's, that's the whole thing. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. We got to take, take more responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta educate minds and give give folks some some like ownership of their existence. Make them feel make them know their self worth and value is um, means something. Not good. Yeah, it's, it's it's so many layers there. So many layers. There's so much stuff to talk about. It's a case study. It's a case yeah. study about relationships. It's a case study about mental health in some spaces. It's a case mm -hmm. study about brokenness. It's a case study about being open and honest and allowing yourself to admit fault, take blame and responsibility, accountability. There's so many things there. So many things there. And it's, it's also, it's, it's a dissertation. No, oh, yeah. Oh, in terms of the narcissistic need for attention. Why did, why were they sitting on across that table having that conversation with us watching? You know, why were you, why? Why? I shouldn't uh -huh. be seeing all this. I should have heard about this from your cousin, not been like, oh no, actually, let me rewind to back when you said this part. <laughs> you know, like it's too much. Mm -hmm. You could have just released a statement if you wanted, if you felt the need to engage, could have released a statement and that's it. This is what it is. You will not be talking about a move forward, et cetera. But there's not there's a lot of different casualties in this whole situation. There's a lot of okay. people who are harmed, who shouldn't be be harmed, particularly kids, you know. Um be, Will's a grown man, you know, but, but, but I understand that piece, but particularly the kids, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it's a lot. It's yeah, a lot. Babies, but they ain't, they ain't grown. Exactly. They ain't grown, grown. Exactly. You know? Oh, so uh, does August and Rick Ross, entanglement. Yes, entanglements, yep. And I mean, I think it's safe to say that 2020 has been one big entanglement. Oof. It really, really has. Mm. It really, really, really has. My goodness. My spirit is going to tell you about something. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I had to have a quicker moment. I've been listening to um, stand up comedians to just like, just like um, get away from stuff and um, let myself calm down, like laugh when I'm watching the dishes or something. Remember Earthquake? Yes. <laughs> yes. Earthquake just did this thing. Um, I was listening the other day, and oh my gosh, it was so darn funny. I mean, he's just, he's a wreck. <laughs> he's hilarious. It's just delivery and timing. And he had this whole scenario about why Moses couldn't have been black. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. He's like, let's just start here. If there were two chickens, and they were in that boat for 41 days, them two chickens would not <laughs> make it. He's like sitting here talking to God. Where are my two chickens at? Well, you know, that was a long ride, you know, and um, what had happened was, you know, and then he said, and the guy would be like, and one of the pigs is missing. Well, you can't have eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, right? 
if you if you that's a if you want a twenty twenty break, go dig up those old comedians. Yes. This it's all on Spotify. That's that's how I do my dishes now. I turn on, crank it up, and like laugh my head off. It's brilliant. Earthquake. I was uh, losing my mind. That is hilarious. I totally, totally amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. That's funny. I appreciate that. That's funny. Yeah. And we need to laugh. We need to laugh. We need to laugh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think I got a little bit left for a toast. Oh, oh, oh. I think I got a little bit too. I had an idea. Talk about it. Okay. Um, I heard that Amanda is taking uh, a second set of exams. Oh, yes. So to her energy, her hard work, her dedication, the beautiful in, in, beautiful entity that she is all around, a toast to her. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I really do appreciate that. Thanks for lifting that up. You know, I've seen her work super hard. Um, and, you know, to be real, I love all that she's doing. And... That step closer to being a stay-at-home dad. Hey, <laughs> man, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not mad at you. <laughs> Look at you. Amanda, I got your back. I got your back, Amanda. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. It's 2020. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> That was good. That was yeah, good. Yeah. Real good. Real good. As always, Brown Juice Barbershop. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Every day, every day, for well, every week. <laughs> Listen, if y'all want every <laughs> right. And, I, and, it's, and you, you, when you first talked about friends, I thought you were talking about that I foreshadow. I was like, you got yours? I was getting all like, <laughs> in it. Um, so. Mm, no, I would, you know, I would have I I sent you a picture of it, brother. Okay. I hope, can't, I hope. can't wait. Can't wait to get it. Me either. I'm, I'm excited to taste the joy. Taste the just joy. Get, you know, it's just something that has the same colors as this is on the way for both of us. Stay, oh, word. Stay tuned. Stay Dude, tuned. God, don't give me no extra, extra large. I, I, don't need, I, I thought I needed that, but I don't need it all that. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> oh, beautiful, man. All right. Have a good one. Until next time. Take it easy. Peace. Brown Juice Barbershop. Peace.